Right then guys, I just wanted to show you this quickly, just to show you the um, core and the shaders and then the memory clock and the fact we're leaving everything or leaving the uh, fans on auto and then if we come over here quickly you can see the validation there with GPU Z and the volts are on 1.15 anyways let's crack on and we'll get some uh, benchmarking done right then my lovelies uh, a quick one this is the 3D Mark Vantage score as you can see we've got a GPU of 22149 and then a 3D Mark score of 22,796. P score on 3D Mark 11 of 5,268. Temperatures as we come down, you can see minimum was 25, current value is 38, maximum was 81. And that was with 1050 core clock, uh, memory 1100, but obviously it equates to 2200. And then 21,000, 21,000, 2,100 on the shader. And uh, I'll just stick you right up near the card. It's really not doing anything. very very quiet but yeah awesome overclock and bearing in mind that is a stock cooler with a massive overclock those temps are great as well anyway let's get on with the uh, gaming section right then guys you saw the uh, benchmarks in the uh, silly overclocked mode what I've done now is I've dropped everything back to stock for the uh, gaming section so that you get a you know massive overclocked benchmarking you know the best that you can get and then the gaming back to kind of a sensible state and you also know that you can overclock the core and the memory and everything like that so you get a best and a worst case scenario um, I think mainly because most of the majority of the gamers the people that are going to buy a card like this are you know normally going to fit it and forget it so that's why I've done the two because if you overclock to the levels that I did then you are probably going to be benchmarking and trying to get points and scores to see what you can get out of it. So, if I move the light around a bit, we're now on Alien vs Predator benchmark. You can see up in the top left hand corner the um, frames per second. This is, as always, with my uh, X58 rig that I do the, all the GPU testing with. 6GB of Mushkin Redline RAM at 2000, 89824, 4GHz i7950, 200x20. Uh, then we're on a Western Digital Velociraptor, the Mushkin 1200 watt power supply. Um, and yeah, that's really about it. Apart from the Noctua and HD14 keeping everything quiet. Just spin you around there, you can see the rig there. With the OEM reference design uh, 560. And Mr Strawberry getting ready to play Crisis in a bit. It's far too early for me. Right, we've done uh, Aliens vs Predator there. Now we're going to go straight into um, DirectX 9 uh, version of... Uh, Resident Evil 5. Okay. We always do the uh, Fitch benchmark section. You can see fraps in the top left hand corner but you can also see the rather large um, frames per second counter in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. All of the games run at 1920 by 1200 um, and Metro uh, obviously Alien vs Predator is just opened and run because you can't change it um, Resident Evil's maxed out 
Metro is run um, maxed out and uh, Crisis we do at Gamer and then we do a small section with that maxed out as well. Right, we'll crack on uh, with Metro. Back to the same short section in Metro. We always try and do roughly the same sort of parts. Why do you say that crisis is completely different this time? So. If you're wondering what the noise is in the background, if you can pick up any fans, I'm just starting my main rig. It's not actually the uh, bench rig. bench rig is actually sat there <laughs> immensely quiet. <laughs> You can see, even though this is the uh, at the moment the bottom of the range five series card, it's still playing Metro very, very easily, staying above thirty frames a second, pretty much. Have to say it, but this card really has got some big balls compared to the price that you pay for it. Right, that's the end of the, well it would have been the end if Mr. Cro Mr. Strawberry had left it playing for a little bit longer. Um, that's the end of the Metro benchmark, or the game that we're going to do. We're going to move on to some Crisis gameplay now. Right then guys, uh, coming from a different angle in uh, Crisis. At the moment we're playing on Gamer, which is 0 AA um, as well, but in a minute we'll turn it up to maximum, which is 16 times, and uh, enthusiast settings. We just want to show you the mix, you know, show you a bit of both. Swimming under the water is also a really good point, really good way of stressing the uh, nads out of the cards. Mr. Strawberry really needs to get a run on if he's going to try and get the helicopter on this side. <laughs> Grenade it quick. Higher. <laughs> <laughs> quick, higher. Oh dear. Rookies, what can you do? Never let the T boy play the computer games. <laughs> We get Mr. S now to stick it into the best that we can change it to from within the game. You literally just turn, it'll show you now, we'll go to system settings, graphics, 
Right, literally, Matt wang it right out, 16 times Q. Now he's going to go to advanced. Mm, and now he's going to turn that on to enthusiast. And it does change everything but one thing to enthusiast. And now he'll carry on playing the game. Now, obviously, it does take a massive hit on the frames a second. It's now going down to the 20s. But even the 570 dips into the 20s at this this settings at these settings Right, if you just stop a second, Mr. S, and hit escape, what we're going to do is turn the uh, AA down to 8. That's it. And then we're going to um, carry on playing, just to show you the difference that makes the frames a second. See now we're up near enough into the 30s. It does make it uh, make the game a lot more a lot smoother. Bear in mind this is only a 200 pound card. I think he just fell over. Tank time! Just press the button already! <laughs> right then guys, uh, you can see that this is an incredibly capable card. Um, and all for uh, 199 quid. I expect there were going to be um, dedicated overclocking cards with better cooling. So there's some very, very interesting times to come. I'll reiterate what I stated before. I honestly, honestly think that it's time for AMD to take a fresh sheet of paper and go away and take a completely new look at their range because this is the icing on the cake. Nvidia have kicked them into touch. This isn't just, do you know what I mean, something small. This is a nuclear fucking explosion uh, in the land of AMD. And to be quite honest with you, I will go as far as saying it, I don't think there's an AMD you should buy now. And if rumours are true and Nvidia do bring out uh, cheaper versions of the 560 and even a 550 we're hearing about, then to be perfectly frank, it's green all the way. But how long will it last before AMD come back? Anyway, it's Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out!